Good morning, good morning, um, and welcome. Uh, welcome to our audience uh, here in Bologna at Il Cinema Ritrovato, and also welcome to all those who will uh, join this uh, conversation via, via streaming uh, from around the world. We're sorry that our friends and colleagues, many of our friends and colleagues, couldn't uh, reach us this year, so we're happy to share this conversation with all those who couldn't. Um, this is a very uh, this is a very special day for us. Yesterday was a very special day for us because the restoration of uh, Sambi Zanga by Sarah Moldor was uh, was a project that we pursued for for a long time. And so, um, first of all, our our gratitude goes to the Film Foundation, and in particular, I'd like to to thank and send my and send my greetings and thanks to Margaret Boddy and Jennifer Ann and Chris Merola and, and all their team. They're the most amazing uh, colleagues to work with uh, remotely. Um, and thanks to the Film Foundation uh, through the Obson Lucas Family Foundation that supported this, uh, this restoration and many others that we have done with them, with the Film Foundation. Um, my maybe most special thanks also go to the FEPACI, the Fédération Internationale des Cinéastes Pan-Africains, the International Federation of uh, Pan-African Filmmakers. Um, without them, this project would mean something completely different uh, because it's through their perspective, their guidance, uh, and thanks to all the friends and the scholars and the programmers in the African continent that we get a better perspective, a better guidance as to what needs to be restored, films that are obscure, mostly obscure to us, or films that are less obscure, like this one, but that couldn't be seen for a long, long time. And so my thanks to Fepasi uh, and to our um, friend Abu Bakar Sanogo, who's uh, one of the representatives in, uh, in Canada for the Fepasi, who has been uh, really our very precious interlocutor. I also like to thank Mohamed Shalouf, who is here today with our audience, because even though not in an official position, he's always there to help and advise and give us tips and uh, Everything we do is a collective endeavor, and uh, and there is a human equation that goes into our work, that is very uh, that is vital because it's a job that is done with um, the with vision, with professional skills of many uh, many of us and many of our colleagues, but mostly with the experience 
and the and the cultural view and the perspective that needs to be uh, needs to for to see these projects happen. And last but not least, my acknowledgement and and deep thanks to l'Immagine Ritrovata and l'Image Retrouvée, both of our laboratories in in Bologna and and Paris that are one whole body, as a matter of fact, and in particular to Elena Tamacaro, um, are, um, I think th this laboratory is, is often celebrated for its technical skills, but I think we don't acknowledge enough the sensitivity and the care and really the vision and the, you know, knowledge in film history that they put into their work, so it's great to be working with them. Um, as I said yesterday and before going, uh, giving the floor to our guests here today, Anushka de Andrade, and uh, also it's uh, not on stage, but I'd like to uh, to salute uh, Henda, Henda Ducados, uh, Anushka's uh, sister and the other Sa Sara Maldor's uh, daughters. Before giving the floor to her, I'd like to I'd like to say once again how many restoration project restoration project projects. Each of them has a story of their own. Some of them present very dire technical challenges, uh, very, uh, very difficult, um, uh, again, technical challenges, the state of uh, the actual print, the decay, there's a whole sort of vocabulary and encyclopedia of what uh, our beloved elements go through. There's a whole other side of it that is uh, not uh, addressed as much, obviously, but it has to do with rights holders, with the history of the elements in the labs, how elements and negatives, for instance, and this is why this project, this very project was created, the African Film Heritage Project was created with the idea that is it is tragic enough that African films, African negatives, or the best elements for each film are not in Africa. They cannot be in Africa, or they can only partially be in Africa at the moment. There are many uh, cinematech in North Africa. There are many cinematechs that are pushing towards making progress. But it is true that it is tragic enough that they cannot be in Africa also for, for political reasons, for historical reasons. So um, many, the, the, all of the films that were made, made in Africa from the 60s, from, uh, from the liberation of the various nations of Africa, always had strong ties with either France or Italy or Belgium or Portugal or the UK because there was no... Um, there was no uh, laboratory to develop this film or because they were cooperation to make this film. So it is clear that when we deal with restoration of African cinema, we deal with the history of colonization, we deal with the history of possessing elements that sometimes are um, moved and shifted from the, the hands of a producer or the hands of a laboratory, then the laboratory shuts down, they are acquired by another collection, the collector or the owner finds this film or receives this film that really doesn't have any tie with, with, with his or her own history. And therefore what happens is that this element, those cans, they are so precious to tell the story of African cinema, to tell the story of cinema, and to tell the story of the world and the 20th century are in fact in the hands of somebody who just uh, acquired them with a bunch of other films, and those films are sitting. They're sitting in a storage place, and they are so vital for so many people, and they're just sitting there. And in this sense, I think in this particular um, project, what was really vital for us is to find a way to return this film to the to the author that made it, to the mind that made it, to the woman that fought to find her means, her production, her camera, her settling to make this film as an act of liberation, as an act of education for her people. And unfortunately, Sarah Maldor is not with us anymore. Uh, sadly, she passed away as we were trying to free this film from all the right issues that surrounded it, by, but her daughters are here today um, to pass on the legacy of this uh, very important filmmaker. And so 
this is one of those cases where restoration can be seen as a useful key, not only to liberate these films that are decaying, they're magenta, they're on YouTube, they are becoming ghosts. And if, they, if a film becomes a ghost, you can't really find, um, you can't really grab onto what it meant originally because you don't see it anymore. You don't see its soul anymore, it's going. So in a way, it's a key to, to find the soul of that film, especially when it was so important. But it's also a way to return it to those who created or those who now are going to pass on the legacy and not to minimize the importance of a rights holder. We cannot restore films without the permission or the cooperation of rights holder, but to, but to let the film make its course in its new life and try to facilitate that. So this is a very particular case study for those who were looking for a very technical case study. is a case study about a restoration that includes a whole other set of issues. So I didn't mean to speak too much. I really want to leave the time to, sorry, to, to Anushka, but it was important to sort of frame what this project was about. So Anushka. Thank you, Cecilia. <coughs> yes, it has been a very long journey to arrive here. And really, once again, I would like to thank you very much because she has been with us for the last four years step by step, but we did it. So really thanks to Cecilia Sineri Trovato, Film Foundation and FEPASI. Um, I would like to make a small presentation of my uh, mother's work. I don't know, uh, I have to put to... Do you want me to do that? No, I just want to, to put the first slide, so yeah. I have to... No, but the first slide. Okay. So, um, okay. Um, uh, we would like my sister and I have prepared a small uh, PowerPoint just to introduce uh, the work of Sarah Melderer and how she made this uh, movie, Sambizanga, that for, I hope some of you have seen it yesterday or this morning. And what is uh, very important to know is to, to start with her name. She, um, she chose her name, Sarah Maldoror, of course, after reading the long and huge poem Les Chants de Maldoror by Lautré Hamon. And it's very important because she was inspired by the beauty of the poem and she wanted her style to also stand on its own. And she would no longer be Sarah Ducados, but she became and she uh, appeared on, on scene as Sarah Maldoror. And with her name, she decided to convey the oral tradition of her cultural heritage. She knew that with her name, her movie were going to transmit the invisible reality of people, the voiceless people. And um, the first, uh, her first step after choosing her name, we are in 50, 1956 in Paris. She uh, created the first black theater company called Les Griots, alongside with Toto Bissant, Samba Babacar, and Timothy Bassari. And their choice was to present black poet, black artist, black theater, and to promote this history, their own history. And uh, for example, Sarah said, I, uh, I don't know why, I j because when she started in theater, they offered her only a uh, very small uh, role. And she said, why should I have only to have to open and close the door. Why couldn't I be Antigona? So that's why they created uh, this um, uh, company. You will see her on the left alongside with Toto Bissant in a play by Jean Genet, Les Nègres. Sarah was the first one. She met Jean Genet and, and asked him the right to, to, 
to uh, put this uh, play on stage and ask uh, Roger Blain to help them to produce this uh, important uh, piece. And then um, she, uh, but you know, she never complained. It was very difficult to do theater, but she had the idea that it would be much more strong and powerful to to go on with cinema. So she decided to do it because she wanted to tell their, her own history, and she left to Moscow. It was a choice to go to Moscow to study cinema and to to because she was impressed by Eisenstein movie, and she chose her um, professor. She could have uh, be with uh, Bundershuk, but she preferred to study with Mark Donskoy. And she said, oh, uh, I, I like very much Bondershuk, but he has so many uh, characters on, on scene. There is so much material, so it, it's huge production. And she said, I, in Africa, I will never have this type of set and unit. So she preferred to work with Mark Donskoy, who, who was uh, a little bit much more intimate, and she could, he could rep you know, be and she could replicate much more the work with him. So then, after studying in Moscow, where she met uh, Samben Usman, a very great, important Senegalese uh, filmmaker, she came back, she went to Alger, and her first experience in cinema was to be the assistant of Gilles, Gillo Pontecorvo on the movie The Battle of Alger, and you can see her here uh, close to the camera. And uh, so uh, then in Alger, she, she made her first movie in 1968, which is called Monangambe. It's an, um, an adaptation of a novel by Luandi Noviera, who was an Angolan writer who was at that time in jail, in Tarafal, in Cap Vert. And uh, then she made Gun for Bonta and her third movie, Sambizanga. And um, the, the first movie, Monangambe, was restored by Arsenal, the German uh, company, who made uh, important work. Unfortunately, we didn't find the sound so the sound of Monangambe is quite bad, but at least it's here. This is too, too heavy. And, um, uh, but it was uh, an important movie also because uh, the music of the film was made by the Chicago Art Ensemble. Uh, and Gone for Banta, that will be a next challenge that I, I offer <laughs> to Cecilia because the copy is lost, but completely lost. I hope it's still somewhere in Algeria and I will have the opportunity to go there as soon as I can and to find the copy because there was a little uh, a fight with the producer who was the Algerian uh, government with Sarah and so she, because during the shooting it was, uh, um, the story was the role of woman during the guerrilla, it was in Guinea-Bissau and she wanted to highlight the role of woman during a guerrilla because she said, you know, no, no war can be win without Women. That's why she. Of course, I will wait. Or maybe we change it. It's for the streaming, probably. It's a streaming. No problem. Issue. No problem. Uh, yes, I can. Uh, we can wait uh, with no problem. But that's okay. <laughs> How long? We have one hour? Less than one hour? Okay. 
and do not worry after the presentation we can we will still hear my sister and I and we can answer to any question you may have well we can keep talking until they until they let us know that the streaming is right yeah oh no we can no. talk for our audience They have no plans to meet regular groups and the program I'm talking since they're all not here, but anyway. <laughs> riprendere da dove era ah. ah ok e questo? I think we can go out of what you're saying and continue talking, and then when it's yeah. done, we keep from where it was, at least our audience yeah. Yeah. can uh, benefit up some time. Okay. okay, okay. No, you're welcome. So I, I, I go back to a gun for Bonta, just, you know, so it was very important for Sarah to, to highlight the role of women, and the producer was not absolutely agree with her, and most of all, she wanted to have jazz music because jazz music is very important in all her filmography. And he said, that's too much. You can do that. So they fought and finally uh, they say to Sarah, you have 48 hour, hours to leave the country. So she left suddenly Algeria. We did two and the copy was uh, left over. So that's why I hope we will find it and restore it and present it here in a few years. Uh, so um, going back to Sambizanga, uh, which was very important because as you understand that Monangambe was presented in film festival and so and Gun from Banta, nobody have seen it because it was left during the, um, the edition. So Sambizanga is considered by for her first long feature film and it's very important in her life and in her filmography because she was the first black woman shooting in Africa. The movie has been shot in Congo, which is a uh, uh, Congo Brazzaville, uh, very close to Angola who was at that time, uh, the film was uh, done in 72. Angola was still under st uh, fighting against colonialism and it, it has been independent in 75. And Sambizanga was very important and, uh, and uh, it has been presented in very, very uh, many film festival and and Sarah won a lot of prizes so then she appeared on the international scene as a militant cinema of uh, liberation so this uh, story is also based on a novel by Luandi Noviera A Vida Verdadera de Domingo Xavier which has been uh, translated 
by our father, Mario de Andrade, and as you may see, the second edition of the movie has been changed with a picture of uh, the movie. Um, what is uh, important is that uh, the movie, as uh, when she presented it for production, the first title was Domingo Xavier, then it changed during the, the shooting for Day of Morning, Day of Joy, which is also uh, one of the last sentences at the end of the movie during the ball. And finally, she decided to change for the third title, Sambizanga. Sambizanga is very important because it's a name of a neighbor, a Museke, uh, near Luanda. And it's, it's important because this is the play where the m liberation movement start and so it's a, uh, the title will place it as a political movie. And what is also, uh, I, I will go later, so th this is a picture of Sarah on the, the shooting of Gun for Banta. So, you know, that's why she was called the militant cinema or a feminist cinema. Uh, so I, I'm not, I'm not agree with that. Uh, as uh, we said yesterday, we will prefer to remind her as a poet. And um, in the, the context in the 70s, everybody was talking about the Vietnam War. They had a lot of film about uh, the Vietnam War, nothing about the war of liberation in Angola, Guinea-Bissau, Mozambique, Saint Tome, and Cap Vert. So that's why for Sarah it was so important. And as I said, she never complained. She said, I am not going to wait for someone who came from I don't know where and saying, oh, what can I do for you, Africans? She said, we are responsible of our own history. We have to tell our history, and we are the one who, ha who has to share it with our people. So uh, her motto was never complain, and if, if anyone is talking about Angola, so she, we have to do it. And that's why um, it was a very important contrib contribution. And um, what is also important in her movie, uh, is the, the importance of poetry and, of course, of beauty, because she was absolutely against miserabilism, as we said. And, for example, here you have uh, one photogram of the movie Monangambe. This photo has been made, I have found it uh, a few months ago, by the, the, the filmmaker René Vautier, I'm sure you know him, uh, who has done uh, Avoir 20 ans dans les Aurès. And René Vautier was living in our ha house in Alger in 69. So uh, he was on the set during the shooting of Monangambe, and he made some beautiful pictures like uh, that one. Um, and for, uh, for Sarah said, I don't, uh, I don't care about, uh, I don't want to, to represent the ugly part of the world, and this is not uh, my job. And, and she really, uh, her objective was to present uh, the human being who care for each other and to for example, surrounded by beauty. Here is a picture of another movie, which is not here, huh? Un Dessert pour Constance, that she has made in 1980. Uh, and you may recognize uh, Sidiki Bakaba, Sheikh Doucouré, and uh, the French um, actor Jean Bouise. It's um, a movie about the immigrant in France, and she chose to, to, represent, an, to represent the solidarity with be, be between them, and as she said also for Sambizanga, 
as you may notice that uh, the main actress, Elisa Andrade, is absolutely beautiful, and that was very important for her. And in other words, hoping, dreaming, and the chance of happiness was uh, very important in all her movie, and um, she was absolutely upset when uh, critics said that uh, it's not that's not true. This story, Sambizanga, cannot be reali is not realistic because uh, she's too beautiful. And um, and and uh, so she didn't want to to understand that. Um, And, and she always said that she would prefer to find poetry in in any any other in any film. Uh, what is important also in Sambizanga is that it is like a mirror of her own life, because um, you know uh, the the role of Maria, her history, as a woman who is going after jail after jail to look for her husband is also be connected with Sarah. Uh, maybe you may not know that our father, Mario de Andrade, was uh, a writer, an intellectual, but also the first president of the movement for the liberation of Angola. And then he was the coordinator of all the movement for liberation in uh, ex uh, Portuguese colonies. And so he was really involved in politics, which means that he was not always at home. Um, uh, in Algeria, yes, but then when we had to move uh, suddenly in Paris, he could not come because he was uh, res researched by uh, Interpol, the, um, uh, the police, so he changed name frequently and nationalities and had, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, five or six different nationalities. He has been Mar Morocco, he has been f uh, Algerian, uh, Congolese, uh, Cap Virgin, Guinean, and unfortunately, this is uh, something very deep for us that he never had the Angolan nationality. Because when he, 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 he was born, he was Portuguese, because all Angolan was Portuguese, and then for political reason, he was not agree with the new government after the independence, so he never got the Angolan nationality. And unfortunately, my sister and I, we have it, and that was something very important for us to be <laughs> Angolan. Um, so uh, it's important to know that, you know, that it was, uh, there is very, there is very emotion in this movie and finally uh, close to her Sarah's own history. And um, to go back to, to, to her life, um, being a woman, it was different. I, I, I don't know if you can imagine how challenging it was uh, in the 50s when she started with uh, the company. And even though in the 70s, being a black woman filmmaker and alone, because she could not count on our father who was a clandestine. Uh, uh, we was a clandestine. We was uh, called. Now they, they will call him terrorist, and she had to raid us and uh, keep going and making movies. That's why, in the in the movie, you know, if, if, if you have noticed that Maria, the character, is always going from jail to jail with her child, with her, she could have left him with an aunt or a friend, but she took him with her, and Sarah did absolutely the same with us. We were always with her. So uh, we were moving from different countries with her, and during the shooting of Sambizanga, uh, because it lasts much more longer than it was previous, because there was a, a coup d'etat in, uh, in Congo. So we, we left 
Paris and we went to to Brazzaville and we were in a school. So we changed school during the year. We finished our annual class in Brazzaville to be with Sarah. Because she, it was not, I mean, she, she said, okay, let's, let's, you know, she could have left us with someone. No, but she decided. So we were always with her. So, and we will be raised in film festival also because <laughs> as much time she could, <laughs> we went with her. That's why we are such involved in, in the cinem cinema world. And um, also, uh, which is important, is her way of behavior. Um, you know, for her, uh, making her movie was very important, no matter what the producer uh, thought. If she thinks that this is the good idea for her movie, she will go at until the end, even though sometimes, uh, for example, uh, she made a movie on the poet Léon Gontran Damas, who was from Guyana, and he was alongside with Aimé Césaire and Léopold Sédar Senghor, and they, the three of them created the movement of negritude. Of course, Césaire and Senghor are, are much more well known, not only for their poetry, but because both of them had a political uh, life and function. So Sa decided to make this movie on uh, Damas in Guyana, she had a contract uh, with, uh, she conveyed a producer uh, from uh, RFO who was a, a channel in France and arriving in Guyana, she said, but the nature, the river, she went to the, um, uh, also, um, uh, well, uh, to, to uh, uh, Cayenne, uh, la, um, bon. De la, la grande prison de, de Cayenne. Bon, uh, well, she, was, she was very impressed by all her the surroundings, so she decided to make the movie in black and white. In black and white. So she changed it during the shooting, and she, when she came back in Paris and gave the, the, the copy to the channel, they said, but this is not what we wanted. We were expecting a movie in color. So the film was never broadcasted. And it's here, and nobody has seen it, or just some film festival who knew that the film was exi existing. So, but she, you know, she, she was like that when she decided something. And for example, for this movie, Sambizanga, I'm sorry to go, go, go on first. Um, she has met uh, Leopold Sedar Senghor that she knew from uh, 56 and who was a friend of my father. And um, she sent him a letter to ask him to, to support and help her in the production of Sambizanga. And um, um, she, in, in this letter, Perdu là, là, voilà. She said, uh, she, you know, he was already president of the Republic of Senegal. She said, I know Senegal is a country of savanna, very calm, sunny, researching in other, in, in other words, a beautiful country. I'm, but my film must take place in a certain climate of hostility. I have to shoot in the Congo. And believe me, this is not a director's uh, desire. I, um, so she, she, she said, I'm not going to shoot in Senegal because that was the idea of Senghor. He was ready to help her if she, make, if she will make the, the, the movie in Congo in, in Senegal because he knew she could not make it in Angola, but at the end of the letter, she said, okay, I'm not going to shoot in Senegal for this reason, but please give me the funding to complete the movie. And of course, he did not. <laughs> so she had to find. But what uh, this is uh, just a small example to let you know that no matter he was president of Republic, 
no matter it was uh, an important channel, if she decided to do something, if, if she decided that it was the best way, it was good for the movie, she was going through until the end, and no matter what happened after that. So um, oh, going to the restoration, so, uh, the, pro so the, the producer of the film was Jacques Poitronneau, and surprisingly, the, the production was quite easy because he was, uh, they won the fund the, uh, from the National Center of Cinema. And, um, and uh, so Jacques Poitronneau gathered around Sarah a very young and promising technical team like uh, Claude Agostini, Jean-Francois Robin, who helped us in the restoration, and Henri Roux. So the film was quite easy to make. But after, after um, the, and, and the film was presented in all, all over the world, you have here s some different uh, uh, posters. The first one is from uh, Republic Czech. And, but unfortunately, Jacques Poitronneau, the, pro the producer who had the, the producer right, sold all his catalog to René Chateau in 1982. From this, this date, the film was, was uh, escaped and it was kept in hostage and we could not see it. So there have been some uh, presentation, but it was only, uh, and, and the copy turned red. So it has been very difficult to get back uh, with the right, with René Chateau. We had, we had fight with, hi with him since uh, 2001. So now it's, it, it's like uh, 20 years. And in 2010, I, um, uh, alongside with my mother, I said we, we can't just say no to each, each person or each film festival who wanted to, to present the film. So it has been a very, very long fight. And um, we have been helped in, in, in that case with the juridical um, team of the SA, SACD, which are the author's rights in France. And uh, it thanks to them that now René Chateau uh, responded to Martin Scorsese, who sent a letter to him saying that he wanted to have this film part of the world heritage. And, and René Chateau said no. So, so we fought with Cecilia. It took us uh, almost four years to be here today and present it in a very good condition. So we would, I would like to thank you for being here. And uh, you know, it has been a very moving for us to be able to present the film. And I hope you will enjoy. And we will have a lot of opportunity since from this movie to present all the other movies that Sarah has done because she has done 42 movies and the most important and uh, the uh, have been since is Monangambe or Sambizanga or the movie she has made on Aimé Césaire but she has made 42 and we are looking and trying to clean all the rights and to find all the copies and then to be able to present them. And the first um, uh, important retrospective will be at Indy Lisboa next in this uh, coming September. Then we will have an exhibition on Sarah at the Palais de Tokyo in Paris, which will be for three months of exhibition about her world. And they have invited our, uh, artists to respond to our spirit. And then we hope to have other retrospective and presentation and be able to present 
all her movies and anyway we are at your disposition dis disposition if you need to have more information on other movies thank you Probably a little time for if to watch the clip, or maybe if there are questions that, that we can relate uh, in the streaming, since we have an audience here. If you have any question, en français ou anglais ou italien. Français ou anglais, c'est la même chose. Ouais. Euh, Est-ce que vous pouvez nous dire quelque chose pour le financement de ce film euh, Comment il a été financé Quels résultats euh, il y a de distribution Merci. So the, let me translate in English. Uh, so the question is about um, one of our member of our audience asked if uh, Anushka can uh, tell a little bit, bit more about how Samin Zanga was uh, produced and funded. Yes, it has been uh, founded. Ah, ma sœur me dit de parler en français. <laughs> <laughs> Do you prefer? Uh, We're having a translation. We're having a translation from English into Italian. So, if you want to ask something in French, we're happy to translate. But we we have English into Italian also for people following us right now via streaming. But. So the funding was <coughs> with the French government, the CNC, Center, National Center of Cinema. So, I, I, you know, it's, um, uh, it, it, it was presented and she won you know, uh, enough money to make the movie. Then uh, she has been helped by the Congolese government, with the president Miriam Gwabi and also by the movement of liberation of Angola. All the actors are from the movement, most of them are, are people who are living in Congo. So it hasn't been a huge budget, but it was, you know, uh, that's why I insist on the fact that uh, all the, the technicians were young people, and so they made, they made it, and after um, the distribution in France was correct, uh, but unfortunately it stopped in uh, 1980, when Poitrono sold the, the catalog to René Chateau. Did she try to reacquire the film by then, before it was sold? Uh, did she try to acquire the rights for the film at the time? Was she aware that the film was going to be sold? No, 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 because uh, uh, Jacques Poitrono decided to do it because he was not able to, or he didn't want to, so, but he sold all his catalog. And uh, then he said to Sarah, I did it. And, you know, but he did not ask anything to her, you know. And, but I, I'm, I'm sure that uh, Jacques Poitrono did, did not realize what he was doing. And he, he, it was good for him because he, he sold it and received money. But it, it was not a Machiavellic choice. Of but course. René Chateau. Is like that, so he doesn't help any movie. It's not. It was not against her. He he does it with everyone. He he's interested only in the movie uh, that he has, who he who which win in he makes money, like uh, the film de uh, de Belmondo or de Lui de Finesse. Do we have any other question? Otherwise, I will ask some more. Um, uh, your mother uh, never made another long feature, but she made so many short features on many subjects. They're, they're very, it's very um, heterogeneous. But uh, I look at things and mm -hmm. s uh, on so many different topics. Was it a choice to, because you stressed also yesterday the importance of remember her as a poet, and you can certainly see that her vision throughout her career subsequently has such a such an eye on things. But was uh, was what happened with uh, Sambi Zanga had an impact on her wanting to do smaller, like more personal or smaller, and not 
to be engaged in the production again? Uh, uh, no, it was it, it was um, a technical choice. She would have preferred to do more long features. She has tried. She was trying to make just after Saint Bizanga to make one in uh, Panama, mm -hmm. uh, and it lost also another copy. It lost. It's 60, 60 minutes, so it's uh, a long feature film. So I'm looking for it. It exists. It does exist. I don't know where. It's called Velada. And she has tried to make another one, Je suis seul, j'ai peur, but it's I have only, only the screenplay. Uh, she has written another one, uh, an adaptation of a Greek novel, uh, Les Petites Filles et la Mort, de Alexandre Papadiamantis. She so and uh, the uh, and the other one she has been working ten years on a long feature film on uh, Louis Delgrès, who was uh, a colonel who fought against uh, slavery in Guadeloupe. But she has made three long features for television: Un dessert pour Constance, L'Hôpital de Leningrad, et Le Passager du Tassili. So if she hasn't made uh, so many as a long feature film for cinema is because she didn't find the financial for to do so. But she has wrote a lot of uh, screenplays that we kept. So maybe this is, uh, I'm thinking, I'm just thinking out loud, kind of, maybe, maybe this is the time and the generation for the sons and daughters of filmmakers that opened the way, that pioneered African cinema, so maybe this is our time uh, to put all this puzzle together, to reconstruct yeah. the work and to mm -hmm. reconstruct the image of what so many African filmmakers were trying to tell at the time with all the obstacles they had to go through. But maybe I'm thinking that maybe this is, this is the generation for archives to share information about where these elements might be and for the sons and daughter to put back together. So I think there is hope. Each of this project ages enormously, mm -hmm. uh, but I think it's really worth it. Uh, there, there was just a joke, but I think it's really worth it to, to go down that way until there is a moment for these films to actually, many of the films to actually go back to Africa and be held there and be preserved there. Yes. So I hope to present some Bizanga in Ouagadougou in the next uh, edition of FESPACO, for example, just to start with Africa. Mm, that's gonna, um, this is going to be the second uh, time, the second edition, because uh, FESPACO happens every two years. Uh, last edition was in 2019, in January 2019. And at the time, uh, with the, with the FEPAC, with the Abubakar Sanogo, uh, we worked together at sort of opening uh, or seeding uh, uh, the way for a, for a, um, a FESPACO classics. Uh, and Abu Bakar and FEPASI are working now at the second edition of this uh, FESPACO classics that's happening in the fall, not just with our restoration, obviously, but all the other institution and cinema techs that are working uh, on, Afri on preserving an African cinema. It would be great if uh, Sambi Zanga and Lumumba, we've been screening Lumumba. In fact, those who have not missed Lumumba, there is uh, a second screening this afternoon. I really, I really encourage you to, to go see it. It's another, uh, it's another restoration that was done in the framework of, uh, of the same project. Um, Assolutamente. Moi, j'ai eu le, la chance et l'honneur de rencontrer, de fréquenter Sarah Maldoror. Je pense que même si la politique Senghor ne l'a pas soutenue, c'était un, un élément privilégié et très respecté et très soutenu par euh, les pionniers, par Semben, par euh, Tahashiria. Je vois dans le générique fin que l'agence de la coopération avait soutenu le film. C'est Tahashiria qui était là-bas. Euh, ce Tunisien qui a créé les GCC et euh, c'est euh, un peu extraordinaire que la même édition où euh, Zambizang a, a eu le Tanit d'or à Carthage, il y a eu un autre film militant sur la lutte de, de libération en Palestine, Les dupes de Taufir Salah, qui était ex 
euh, au, euh, euh, à cette édition, c'est euh, vraiment un élément fondamental de, de ce, ce groupe-là, parce que quand on parle de, des débuts du cinéma, on, on ne peut pas parler de Semben tout seul, on ne peut pas parler de euh, Mustapha Alassane, le pionnier du cinéma d'animation tout seul. C'était vraiment des conditions de, de solidarité qui ont fait que des films comme Zambizanga ou Les Dupes aboutissent et arrivent et, et, et à enrichir notre mémoire cinématographique. Et euh, j'ai une pensée très forte à Sarah Maldoror parce qu'elle doit être très contente que ce film revient au public parce que je me rappelle chaque fois il y avait ce problème, il y avait, on avait accès à d'autres films, des cours et, et tout ce qu'elle a fait, mais celui-là il avait ce problème et maintenant le voir sur grand écran euh, avec ces belles images, euh, revenir en arrière avec euh, ces événements et puis euh, le sort des deux Congos là où, euh, à l'époque où Salam Aldoror tournait son film euh, à Congo, Brazzaville, le Congo Kinshasa avait entamé une dictature et c'est vraiment les contradictions de cette Afrique qui a eu les indépendances, mais qui a eu un, des moments très difficiles d'après-indépendance. Et ce film, euh, pour moi, c'est un document historique très important à sauvegarder, à en montrer et... Euh, euh, un point de départ pour que, comme disait euh, Anouchka, penser à, à tout le patrimoine de Sarah, parce que euh, tous les cinéastes africains n'ont pas la chance d'avoir une fille comme euh, Anouchka pour penser à leur patrimoine et aller, aller chercher, aller défendre, à, à se batailler pour, pour les avoir. Parce que je pense à, par exemple, à Jean-Michel Sissoko, le Congolais, qui n'a pas... Euh, la chance d'avoir des gens conscients, etc. Et son film, le, La Chapelle, qui est un, point, un film important sur l'histoire de la pénétration missionnaire en Afrique, ne soit pas... Euh, euh, ne, ne revient pas de, devant le public pour raconter euh, à travers les yeux des cinéastes africains cette période post-coloniale. C'est à nous de faire les, les, les filles et les fils de cinéastes sans filles et fils. C'est à nous, c'est aux archivistes, aux historiens, c'est à nous de nous tourner comme les fils et les c'est ça, non? But I'd like to translate very briefly what what Mohamed Chalouf said. Mohamed Chalouf has uh, has uh, played a very key role in Tunisia and in 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 the history of the programming of African cinema. He was. Uh, He's been the first to, to actually make um, uh, um, a festival on African cinema in Italy, uh, starting in Perugia, many, many, many years ago. So he's an old friend, and he's worked in uh, in in many different uh, in many different environments. And he has met uh, Sarah Maldoro personally. So he starts uh, go to her, and uh, and he feels that um, she was ex he remembers that she was extremely. Uh, even though she had many obstacles to make her films, she was extremely respected and well seen. And even though um, she didn't get the support from Senghor, as the letter that that was a very that was a very ironic letter to show how she still wanted the help, even though she couldn't uh, she couldn't film there. But um, Mohamed Shalouf noticed how the agency for cooperation was there. Uh, the agency for cooperation was. Uh, had been set uh, uh, in in movement by Tahar Sharia, who was a pioneer pioneer of uh, Tunisian cinema, and it's uh, it's interesting to see how the uh, Journée du Cinéma de Carthage, the festival that happened in Carthage, uh, the the film uh, Sambin Zanga got uh, the Tani d'Or, the the main award of the festival in 1972, the same year that the Dupe. Uh, a very major film uh, for the um, for the the liberation of Palestine was was it also awarded at the same time. We've been looking for that film for for a long time. We would love to be able to to restore that film. Um, so yes, Mohammed was was stressing how important it was to restore this film. What an important historic document, and how it's 
again, extremely telling that uh, about the history of Congo and also the history of Congo in the in the two films. In fact, we're presenting uh, this uh, Lumumba. If you if you think about and how uh, the history of Africa is also unfortunately full of uh, full of contradictions, full of tensions, full of dynamics that pulled it apart in many directions. And also, he was um, Mohammed was reminding how many filmmakers, many film. Uh, do not have uh, sons and daughters to go seek for their film, to go look for their film. So, a little bit as a provocation, but I actually do believe in that. It's in our, it's in a, it's in our responsibility as archivists, as scholars, as restorers, to be those sons and daughters and to go look for these films and to go look for this funding. Clearly, uh, not everything can be can be restored. Restoration is not even an answer to everything. Uh, we say this every time we have conversation or exchanging like that with our um, with our students or with our uh, younger colleagues or when we go abroad. Restoration can be done on certain titles, but uh, there should be an effort to make uh, the politics of access and the politics of preservation in in the various countries in the community uh, more streamlined and more supported by the government. So this is why. This is why film archives are part of a community because a community can also try to lobby each other's government or influence or or guide or influence each other into try to establish the best preservation um, preservation uh, uh, guidelines or standards or protocols. So clearly, not everything can be found and restored. But I do really mean this without any rhetoric that the first step is to share the information that archive have in their collection, create an open database where archives put together, look in their collections, look for African cinema, because we want to start from there and share that kind of information. That is the first step and believe it or not, is always it's not always as easy. So I really do think this is the first thing to do, to know where things are and to open up our collection, our catalogs, our lists, and start from there. Um, maybe we have one last question. No, we're, we're good to go. It's not possible anymore. Yes, I lost track of time. So I thank you very much for being here, and I thank everybody that um, saw this conversation uh, via streaming, and we wait for you next year in person here in Bologna. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Merci. 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 Thank you.